and uh, the, the um, <coughs> leaving the Mishkan, leaving Har Sinai, and the explanation of why the Kohanim have to guard it around it like in Har Sinai. Okay, we already did things like that before. Hmm. The whole idea of counting the people and the reason from the prohibition to count the people in number and what happens when David Amelech yes, made a mistake and others mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in this regard. I don't remember what I can You did not or you did? I'm trying to remember. So, so just count. The day before was 35. that the people needed to be counted then. Uh, the um, formation of the flags and the different pictures on the flags and a wondrous explanation for the arrangement of the tribes and the place of each tribe in the traveling where they were camped around. Um, the great miracle that happened when the people were arranged and counted, I don't understand what he's talking about. Um, why was the Levi Shevet the smallest in the tribes, in the numbers? Hagam Levi was the smallest number, the tiniest number. Started from the same, right? The brothers of Yaakov, sons. Mm -hmm. And now they're the smallest in the number mm -hmm. of all of them. Um, well, they and didn't, they didn't have uh, much, much to, to, to do. Did they? Did they? Well, I didn't have like, they, yeah, so, uh, Israel yet. Right. So. That's right. This is now when we bark, right? right? And the explanation of the colors the various colors that were used to cover the uh, tabernacle uh, um, the perch and furniture of the tabernacles when they would move from place to place. Some of them were covered in trelet, some of them were covered in something else, in, in uh, animal skins. So he says the different colors that were used and what is the reason for them. Those are, those are my offerings. Um, what was the first question? The uh, reason for counting and why you cannot count them by number and what happened with David Amelech when he forgot or made a mistake or whatever. To me it looks like wonderful seeing and thinking about Ramban uh, when you when you say the, about the glass and all the canon. Because there is I, I suppose it will be something it's, mystical. It's gonna That's why it's like it. Yes. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, there is something profound. Tziurehat the galim ve kavanot at tziurim biur ifla le seder a machanot u makom kol shevet ve shevet. Okay, wait a minute. If you want to do that, it's Perik uh, Aleph, Perik Beit, I'm sorry, yes. uh, ch chapter 2, verse 2. two. In, two, in the in the Bible, Beit. Two two in the Bible. Yeah, but it's the fourth book. Four two two. Well, four is equal to two two, two plus two. That's well. Uh, chapter two. By the way, Hashem and Moshe will Aaron lay more. Each al diglo. Each man will be according to his flag. A bit otot. Whatever that means, with a sign. I guess this, the flag would be a sign, Levet Avotam. Oh no, within the tribe, right? With a sign of who his family mm -hmm. right. group is. Right. So there's a flag for the tribe, and there is a sign for the family. 
יחנו, וישאל קמפ, בני ישראל, מנגד סביב לאוהל מועד יחנו. They will camp opposite, facing around the אוהל מועד, the tent of meeting. האיש שבט נמצא לב נומרוס פאנטיז. יאה. So, um, what, how is that? Well, uh, each so there will be one big flag for the tribe. Around that flag will be assembled a number of the families of the tribe. And each tribe will, ha- each family will have a sign of its family for the camp in Canada. So if you want to know where you belong, if you happen to be a Frankel family, and you happen to be in, uh, let's say, Yehuda, tribe, you would go to find the Yehuda tribe, and if you were a child, you were kind of lost, and you'd say, oh, now I found the Yehuda tribe. Now I walk around until I see the Franklin family tree uh, sign, and you know where you are. Is this so like you say, are, oh, Uncle Joe. Is this a sign saying Fra- Frankel? I guess so. Or, or a symbol, maybe. A, yes. I mean, I guess the Ramban might explain it. So they will, and, and then, so they are all surrounding. The oil boy is in the middle, and they camp in a surrounding way. And then the Torah goes on to say, Vachonim Ketma, towards the Kedem is the east, because it is the place from the sun comes up earliest. Kedem, the Kodom Kodem is early, right? So the early side, which means the sun coming up early in the east, Mizracha. דגל מחנה יהודה לציר אותם, that's where יהודה was trying to see what they, ונשיא and the head of the tribe was לעניין, נחשון בן אדם ודם, וצבא אור ודם, and they give you numbers and so on and so on, right? And so on. And it sounds like each one of these four wings, four directions, have just four names. יהודה for one of them, יששכר for another one, Zvulun for another one, and uh, and what? Zvulun, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. In, in that group, in that group, yeah, yeah, yeah. Group. In that group of Yehudas, Yehuda is the head of that yes. grouping. There were Yisachar. four in that group. Yehuda, Yisachar. Three. Three in that group. So four times three makes twelve, right? And they give you the numbers and so on and so on. And then towards the Taiman, which is south, Ruvain, and his three other tribes, two other tribes. And then so on, right? And then Oil Moed was with the Levine, and then it describes Machane Ephraim to the west. I don't know why they put in the Oil Moed in the middle. It says east, and then south, and then Oil Moed is described in the middle, mm-hmm. and then west, west and, north. and then north. I don't know why, why, they, I don't why, know why, they, why don't they, they start the Oil Moed and yes. say it's east, west, and now south and north. It feels like a very interesting. Okay, anyway, so that's the numbers, right? Mm-hmm. And then all of them together counted a certain amount and so on and so on. And that's the way they travel. Okay, so now the Ramban, who is on our page Resh Aleph in the book, Q2. Q2. Do you have Resh Aleph, sir? In the Ramban? I have. You do. Okay, Isha Degel the Abba the the Otot. Now that's a strange word, a yeah, sign, okay. Isha the Globe Otot. Kol Degel the yellow mapa sivua snuyago. Each flag will have a tapestry. A mapa is we usually call a map a map, but it means a hanging. Uh-huh. A hanging which is colored. Colored hanging, hanging for it, and therefore you could see it from far away. You know, I'm red, or I'm today. By the way, color one. Teams have, uh, have colored flags, right? So mapatsu atuyabo, 
צבע של זה לא כצבעו של זה, one color is different from the other one, right? shouldn't be confused. צבע כל אחד כאין הבנו הקבועה בחושן. Now, the color was chosen, special, right? Because, you know, the Choshen of Aharon had stones, special stones. Each one of them was a different stone, which is enumerated in the Hayikra. Uh, and those stones have a color. Mm -hmm. It's a precious stone of some kind. I mean, I don't know them, but uh, each one of them had a different color, blue, green, yellow, red, brown, and so on. So that is the color that you had for the tribe on his sign, on his hanging. Rashi says, and therefore everybody recognizes his, his flag. That's Rashi. Vikata Arab Eben Ezra, Eben Lazar, Simanima Yu Bechol Tegel. Not only color, but the Eben Ezra says not only that, but there was a form, there was a, a drawing of some kind on the Tegel. One of them had a lion, and the other one had a scorpion, and the other one had a unicorn, who knows what, right? A bird. Different colors, different but I, I think that the color, because we have a yellow, red, green, and blue, green and blue, it looks like it must be the four sides of the encampment. No, the twelve, uh, for the four, there's uh, four different colors, I, I guess. Yeah, right? Four it's colors. Four colors. Okay. We're talking about so far the four directions. Oh, the four directions, okay. Yeah, seems like. And, and this is the Ebenezer who says that there were also figures and drawings, not just the color, but drawings, and he'll tell you which one. Degel Yehuda Tzurat He was a lion. Kibo Himshil Himshilo Yaakov. Because Yaakov had established him as a king, and the king, uh, lion is the king, lion king. We even have, I can prove it to you that the king is the lion because we have a show that's called the lion king. Right? Uvedeyel Ephraim, Surat Shor, because Yaakov had called him Bechor Shor, the firstborn's uh, bull, right? Ephraim. Uvedeyel Dan, and Dan had Surat Nesher, a eagle, eagle. Mm -hmm. Achi Yidimula Kruvim, so that they would be similar to the Kruvim, Shira'ah Yecheskel Hanavi. What's that got to do with it? So he says here, Oh, shame, Kanesha Yair Kino. Oh, well, that is Kanesha Yair Kino. Mizrahi, Tzioni says that um, he was called, uh, that he was made to be the eagle because Hashem is like the eagle that hovers over his t over his nest taking care of the babies so why should Ephraim have that I'm sorry Dan why should yeah. Dan have that oh, but he said yeah Dan will have that why Dan because he was the last one bringing up the rear of the uh, camp and therefore he would be the one who's taking care of the ones who are weaker children whatever making sure that everybody is okay so he's like behind and enemies shouldn't come from behind and attacking them, so he is the caregiver, right? So he takes on an eagle because, and, and that's the symbol of God, mm -hmm. taking care of his young. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, you know that, that according to the Ibn Ezra, the form for Dan was not because of one of the blessings of uh, Yaakov, but, but because he's carrying out the function, and the attributes of what God does for the people. So he has an eagle. Why, uh, but not why a serpent, remember? Why a serpent? God is like a serpent? No, no, no. Because uh, Dan. Dan. Yeah, but he, do, he doesn't use it. He uses the Shemesha. Because he's the one in the back. I mean, I'd say, you're right. I mean, why, why would, according to the Ebenezer, why would he choose the, the symbol that wasn't used in Yaakov's bracha? The other two, Yaakov's bracha, right? Where is it, Yaakov's Bracha? Mikates? Mikates? No, no, it isn't Mikates. Yuki, right? Okay. Yuki. So, Yehuda, he says, is Gurai, that's correct. And Dan, 
Dan Nachash al Berak. He's a snake. He's the first serpent on the road. Yes. And he rather, but you remember that the, the snake is somebody who is hated by people, by England. It's a violent. Uh, he, why is he a snake? Because he attacks the horse's hoofs of the enemy going That's around. the Moses. That's the re reference to that again. Yeah. When Moses. So, but yes. on whatever, that is a negative. A yeah, negative, yes. Image. Maybe that's why the Ebenezer chooses something that uh, just the horse. Horse, it says horse. Right? Ano Sheikh Iqbeisus. By Iqbo, the Iqbo, the Iqbo Achor. He strikes at the heel of the of the the horse that the rider, an enemy, is riding on, and that person falls back because the horse stumbles or rears up or whatever, right? Falls. So that's an interesting thing. Okay. And then he says, and then he says, what? Excuse me. The snake also has a positive. Um, yeah, what's that? Yeah, because it's very smart. Yeah. Very he uh, went into a plague. Uh huh, right, right. Yeah, but tired. that was, but you know that that was Dafka used for its antithesis, right? I mean, God wanted to show them, you think that the snake brings death. I will show you that I can even use a snake to bring life. I am going to be able to use the negative thing that causes destruction to bring. Uh, that's why his medicine, by the way, has the snake yes, on top of the stem, yeah, right? One, one is but that doesn't mean that the snake is good. That means that the, uh, God wanted to show that you should not think that the snakes cause death. It's sin that causes death. And if I want, I could make good things come out of the snake or bad things come out of the snake. It's not the snake. The snake is not the snake. It's what God wants to happen. Right? I mean, that's a. So you can't you can't bring that as an example of a snake being good. It, he was Dafka using the negative to show. Cancel it or what? No, he was, no. That I can make anything happen to be good or bad. Good evening. Hello, Yehuda. Good evening to you. How are you? Doing good deeds as always. You are. How are you feeling? You have recovered. How are you Doing good. You're indestructible. Right. I'm indestructible. For some reason, he jumps to Dan. He goes first. The Ebenezer goes first to Yehuda, which is a lion. Then he goes to. Then he goes to Ephraim, which is a shore. Ephraim was the second one that was mentioned? No, it was the third one that was mentioned. Reuben. And then he says that Reuben, Don, Reuben. Don, which is the last Reuben. one, he says is the, is the, is the Nesher. Yes. And then he says, Yeah, and then and the oil maid was in the middle, right? She had Mulakubi. Oh, goodness, now we've skipped something. Piggy. Yes. Come on, man. I, I missed what he's talking about. Are you with us, sir? So he... You notice that he only, Rabbi Ebenezer described only, I think the Ebenezer describes this, maybe, maybe it's him, the Ramban. He's saying there's a description of the forms on the picture, the picture on the flags. Yehuda was a lion, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, Ephraim was a shore. And Dan was an eagle, right? Mm -hmm. So far. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't describe the fourth one. Mm -hmm. Got three, mm -hmm. right? No. Three. Even Ezra? No, even Ezra said Reuben uh, as like a uh, figure of a man decorated where? Where? with mandrakes. Where is this other? In the beginning. But Rabbi Abraham. Oh, we did a lot of work. I skipped it, I skipped it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, we do have four. Man. Yes. 
Man. Because of the Duda and he had Dudaima, Dudaima, Dudaima and these yeah. little berries, whatever they were, mandrakes, right? Mm -hmm. Why? He doesn't explain why. Because, you know, Yehuda, we've got, because there's a story about Yehuda. I mean, why? I mean, Yehuda, Yehuda was blessed to be the Lion King, right? And Ephraim was Bechor Shor, because that's also the Bracha that he got. He calls Genesis 30, 14. That's, yeah, he was, he brought the Dudaim to, to, to his mother in order so to, it was a to win the chance. It. Huh? it was a symbol of uh, fertility. Yes. I don't know if it was fertility or whether it was, it was a trichiziac. I don't know, but what's the so so? Why would you choose to make Ruvain a flag with a picture of a man yeah. with Dudaim on it? Because Ruvain once brought Dudaim to his mother. I mean, and then and then his mother. When Rachel asked for them, yeah, and then. Uh, and she, uh, she wanted uh, her turn, I don't know, Yaakov to come to her. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what, what, why, why is that uh, relevant, relevant to why having the sign of Ruvain's flag? Yeah, the connection is like a sexual connotation or something like that. Why? Oh, what for? I mean, that sounds silly, no? Yeah. Okay. And in, in what's and what's the point of these four pictures according to the Ramban or the Ibn Ezra? It says Aji Bula Kuvim. He's not talking about the Kuvim that are in the Mishkan. He's talking about the Kuvim that the forms that are on Merkabah. Merkaba. Merkaba. Yeah. Uh, yeah, which we do which at least I don't understand anything about, but Yechezkel saw in his vision a Merkaba with all kinds of wheels and all kinds of figures of of animal figures around it, and one of them was a man, and one of them was an eagle, and one of them was a lion, was a, a mesher, a, I, I'm sorry, a bull, and the other one was a, uh, a shore, uh, I'm sorry, a lion, correct. So there are four, these four flags are the four flags that were on the Merkaba. Now you're getting a sort of a mystic, mystical picture according to Ramban, I think it's, this is him talking now, that, um, that the four, if you were to look at the form of Am Yisrael around the Mishkan, it would be like the Merkava in the vision of the Tazkel, that the Oel Moe is like God himself, that's the place in which God dwells, and there are and there's this Merkava, the people are like the Merkava, and on the Merkava are four figures of the lion, the man, the Nesher, and the bull like the vision that he had in heaven. is what the people are. It's what the people are. So it's a beautiful idea, right? Okay. V'haya oil mo'ed v'toch ha'emza u'machane alvi'im se'vivam v'toch ha'machanot. And uh, so the Levites were around uh, it inside the camp. U'ki'inyan sh'uzkar v'sefer yitzirah. Just like it's mentioned in the Sefer Yitzirah, and by the way, he has here a footnote number 11, it says he looked it up and he couldn't find this allusion in the Sefer Yitzhira. That we have. Yeah. What, 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 some, some Kabbalistic book. Yes. He says, oh, it's on a Midrashim, Rachel, in Tet. I mean, it's up to talk about. Okay? Ve'ichal kodesh and the, and the heichal, the, the holy of holies, is on the inside, but the, the, the very center. The hinei ha'peot, the corners of Peot. Yes. The, we, we remember how he starts? He starts from these. He started from these. Yes. He from these. So he says these corners, these sides, started from the east like the sun goes. Mm -hmm. First from the mm -hmm. east. Mm -hmm. Started. But we count them from the, from the east. Like the day begins. The Acharav Hadarom, and then the south is mentioned, right? We, we talked about south. Why is south after the east? Oh, yeah. The Acharav Ma'arav, and then west, and then north. Why? Can yeah, because know? because the 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 Oel Hamoed is in the center, like the sun is in the center of the firmament. 
Yeah, but why, why, is so, so, so why is south? Why is south next? Why not north next? What's the difference which way it goes? Mm. Okay. He's trying to explain the circle that's going around yeah. right now, right? Yeah, there's a moment around. of the sun. East, and then south, and then west, and then north. North is last of all. Yeah. Yes. Is the sun Finally, maybe, because of Israel, the sun was more to the south in the summertime? Because they're just above the equator, so on a normal day, the sun would go from the east, and it would be to the south, and then west, but I don't know what north is. Anyway, I don't understand that. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's like I go right here, right there, here, the center, go back and go over there. Wow. It's like that. Oh, for <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he goes first. Who meaning the, the Yehuda, I suppose, right? Yeah. The, the, the Yehuda was the leader, so he would, st he would travel first. Kemoshet Siva Hashem Yehuda Yale Betchila, Yehuda should go first. Uruvain Bedarom Lechavoda Bechora, and Uruvain was the head of the southern uh, group of tribes because of the honor of the firstborn. Vihinei Shnei Galima Smuchim, these two flags that were next to each other, east and south, Hayu Leleah, they were the children of Leah. In Bechor Shifchata, with the firstborn of the Shifcha of Leah, which is God, he's saying here, who which was born to Zilpah. Yeah. Right? And he was in the Gelruvain. Okay? God. Because he was born on her lap. On Leah's lap. And then on the west, you had the flag of, one flag of B'nai Rachel. B'nai HaMishpachot, it's up, and then, who was that? Yosef Ephraim and Menashe? Who was in the West? Menashe. Who was the friend? Who was the Machane? Ephraim, Menashe, and Benjamin in the West. Mm -hmm. I see, Ephraim, Hashem, and Benjamin. So they are the sons of the descendants of Rachel, right? The children of Yosef and, uh, and Benjamin. Vedegel b'nei hashfachot, and then the children of the uh, maidservants of Rachel and Leah are the Tzafon, Achronim, were last of all counted on the north. Does he have anything here? For a second. So for some reason, the firstborn of Leah's Zilpa was counted with Ruvain because he was born on her lap. I don't know exactly. I'll be your Show Leah. I guess there's a passage like that, right? So he is closer to Leah than the other Shvachot. And then the three that were remaining, Dan, Naftali, and... Asher, we're in the north. Okay, uh, so so far we have this kind of format that he has. But old Ra'iti the Medrash, and I saw in the Medrash, Kishem Shibara, Kadosh Prahu, Arba, Ruchot Ba'olam, Kach Sibay, Bekis O, Arba Chayot. Just like God created four winds, four directions, four uh, compasses in the world, there, in the same way, he surrounded his kise, his throne, with four animals, four figures. Ulamala mikulan kise akavod. And above all of them is the throne of glory. Ukenegdam say the sidera kadashvokhu had the tigalim Moshe. And parallel to that, matching that, above, he made also for Moshe with the tigalim. Amar lo, he told him, Mizrach, shemimenu yotzei or laolam, the east, from which light comes to the world, right? The sun comes up from the east. Yehei kenegdo Yehuda, shehu baal melucha. Let him be, let that be Yehuda's side, that he is the king, royalty. And he says over here that the king, the royalty is called light. For example, it says, Laman heyot near le like a candle of David. 
uh, if you were near is the more near, he's saying over here. Yeah, okay, right? A king, the king brings light, I suppose. But Allah shaved Yisachar, and with him is Yishev shaved Yisachar, Shehu Baal Torah. Remember? And Torah is light, right? So you got a kingship which brings light, Torah which brings light, Yisachar. The Allah Matez Zvulun, and also Zvulun is with him, Shehu Baal Ashirut. Wealth. Or, and also he's saying over here there's some places in which wealth is called light. Uh, he says in Kabbalistic terms, it says uh, that Kochav Noga, shining star, is one who gives wealth. I don't know. Okay, whatever that means. And um, it's fine. Kamash diktiv Zvulun lechof yamim yishkom. Zvulun was uh, on the shores, and he was a commerce man, so he made a lot of money. Kamosh ne'amar ki shefa yamim yimku, yinaku. He will uh, imbibe, he will be able to absorb all of the wealth of the seas. Yisu barishona, they will go first. Right, Yehuda, Zvulun, and Yisachar. Include, they will go first. Include the, the pirates. Yeah, the pirates. Yeah, pirates get rich also. Yeah, because you remember uh, here. In, he wasn't a pirate. Though. Here in the in the Caribbean world, yeah. there were a lot of Jews. So he was a good. Uh, a lot of Jews involved in, 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 in pirates. Yeah. Who said? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's in the history of, of who said? the Americas. Who said? Yeah. You know that. I never heard that. It's a beautiful story. Oh, it's beautiful, but Jews were pirates. Well, it doesn't seem that uh, well, some of the Jews got wealthy uh, by, by, stealing, by, by stealing and killing. But uh, it was in the so, time of the Inquisition and has to do with this kind of thing. So they are fighting against the Spaniards. No, no, no. You have to show me. I'd like to see yeah. that. You say, okay, so they go first. Commotion in my way, I bore Malcolm with my hand by Hashem Beroshan. Right, so that the king goes first and Hashem is on his hand. Mm -hmm. That's what the king. The mission was in the middle. Yes, coming up, of course. Correct. So, but they lead the way. Yeah, Yehuda and Yusakhar lead the way. That's the plan. Rosh means upon their heads. I don't think it means head of the Oh, you think, you, well, it's a good question now how they actually travel. It sounds like Yehuda goes first, but where is the Mishkan when they're traveling? When they're, when they're camping, Yehuda's first on the east. But when they're traveling, is the, is the tabernacle ahead of them? Sounded like, right? There's a whole matter that discusses how the Aaron would go forward and the Aaron yeah, agreed would straighten out the earth. And yeah. and Some say that. Uh, the tribe, uh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. so far he's not, he's not telling us what happened with the. With him. But, he's, but he's going first, I don't know what it means. Uh, uh, I think he said before. Yes, he did. Oh, rather than Hashem? Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, some of the. That, that's, your, that's your question. Yeah. But he's saying that the king goes and, and uh, God is, I suppose, with him. I don't know. But right now we're talking about camping anyway, right? Mm -hmm. And Darom, so in the south, Talalei bracha b'gishmei bracha yotzi mibenu le'olam. And he's saying, this is again a question about whether this is true, in geological terms, uh, maybe a lot of meteorological terms, but he's saying the south is the place where Jew blessing Jew, Jew that it gives goodness to the world, and rains that are good rains come from there always. 19. Yes. I'm not sure that's true. Okay. Yehei Kenegdo, and there and what he said, in Sota. that direction Sota. Sota. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, it's a quote from the Gemara, but that, I, I, don't know, I don't know if it's true anyway. And, there, and therefore Ruvain comes from, is in that side, Shehu Baal Shuba, because he's a Baal Shuba. How do you like that? Because Ruvain 
Really? Repent. After the after he did this business with his father, it's a right uh, business. So he was the one who did shuva, and he is a symbol of shuva. And shuva causes God to bring good things to the world. The Allah, and with him is God, Shahi Bal Gvura, because he is powerful. Why? Powerful. Twenty. Gedud. That's right, because he was called. He was blessed with Gedud. Remember, he was like a, a battalion, a battalion of, of army. Why is Gura connected with Chuba? So he's going to explain. Ruvain the Chuba, the God the Gura, the Shimon the Emza, the Chaperala. It takes strength to do repentance because right? you have to fight with your yeah, evil inclination. Yeah. And Shimon comes in the middle between them to bring Kapara, to bring atonement. Why? Why Shimon? Oh, that he should be atoned. Because you remember, Shimon was cursed by, by Yaakov. So I don't want to even let my name be mentioned with him. Shimon. Because of what they did with Shem. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I remember. So, yes. so now you've got Reuben who did Shuba, and you've got God who has Gura, and they were Reuben on one side and God on the other side, and they put Shimon in the middle so that they will influence it and they will attack oh. it. Because mm -hmm. oh. he is a character. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. And, uh, and then he says, and they will travel the second ones, right? One east goes first, then south. Because Teshuva is next to, second to Torah. That's why you remember, Yisachar went first as the Torah with the light, and then Teshuva comes right after him. And Ma'arad, west, was Osarot Shelek. It is the place where snow is stored. Exactly, I don't know why. The Otsarot Barad de Korbachon and all kinds of storehouses of hail and cold and we and heat. Now by the way, it's true that the west is where the weather comes from. Right? Yes. Our our airflow in the world. Yes, and all the cold west all the yeah, sure. Yeah. The weather always on. We always find out what the weather is in California, and it's going to go to the section of states, and then it's going to come to the east. I mean, there are times when there's a way this way and a way that way, but it's generally speaking yeah. east to west. Oh, well, west, 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 west. west. So, um, despite the fact that he said the south is where good dew and good rains come from, but most of the weather comes from the west, right? So he says, all the Shelech, the Sarbarad, the Kor Bachom comes from there, who can make them, and there, Ephraim, the Menashe, the Binyamin. Why? He doesn't explain. Maybe he wrote in the bottom, you know, I have two points. Uh, Ephraim, the Menashe, okay, the Midrash, Mia, Mod, Nifnei, Shelech, Ubarad, Ephraim, the Menashe, the Binyamin. Who's going to be able to withstand, who's going to be able to protect you from the bad weather, who's going to be able to resist the bad weather, it's Ephraim, Menashe, and Binyamin. Why? Shelifnei Ephraim, Ubinyamin, Menashe, Orera et Guratecha. There's a, where is the puzzle? Shanae Amar. That says, before Ephraim and Binyamin and Menashe, you, God, wake up your strength. And strength, Gura, is the thing that's going to stand up against the cold and heat. Huh? I think there's a little bit of it. I don't know which possibly is talking about. Did you see those footnotes? And then, after you have all of them, Shkina the Olam Ma'arab. And the Shkina. That is, you know, the tabernacle with the Kodesh Karashim is always towards the west. Bigvu Binyamin, next to Binyamin. Because remember, Binyamin is the place in Beit HaMikdash where God will hover. Shinemar li Binyamin, Amar Yedid Hashem Yishkon Lovet HaKalat. That was the place where, where God was born. Oh, isn't it? That wasn't that area. 
David, I hear a share. I hear a kosher. I hear it comes to light up the darkness. So I should find it so well by Shem and Rachel. He puts his feet into oil. Oil brings light. The Allah, right? The Allah, Shevet Nafkei, which is Bar Bracha. The Leaf Bracha. Why? Thank you. 